this stuff. This book there. Yes. Well, today we do some weapon um, teachings or practices. So I hope you have some. I can see a lot of them from Australia as well. Jesus. Thanks a lot. That's very nice. I hope this uh, stream doesn't break down as it did the last time. We'll check it uh, within the next minute. So today we're going to do some uh, exercise with Boken and with the uh, Joe. So I'm not sure if you have high ceiling like we have. We actually cannot touch our roof. But uh, take your mobile phone, go outside. It's beautiful. Don't see anybody closer than salt length range. And then just practice with that, please. Okay? Let's go. My guys. Okay, usually. In the beginning of the classes, we do some uh, stretching. And I used to do it with the bokken because I always want to feel the bokken itself while moving it around my body. It gives me better censoring for using it later in the kata or in the kumitachi in the meeting with the partner. So, Basically, we almost do the same stuff like an Aikido preparation. You can also take whichever stick you have at home, or brushes, <laughs> if you don't have a black hand, but most of you should, I think. If you go down with that, today we use Hakama, so you won't see probably. We keep on touching our heels, so the uh, feet are quite close, and you don't have much space. It's more central um, balance. Yeah, that's interesting, because therefore your hips has to counter, react on all the little motions of unbalancing the body, and all the legs and the uh, angle have to react fine. So basically, on Thursday, when we had a lot of intense training here, Sylvie and me, mm, we, all, we did a lot of uh, ukemi work. And uh, usually it's not so common with the uh, weapon classes that you have to take ukemi. 
But we're going to do practice ukemi with that weapons as well. Because it's a little bit different than if you're completely on your own. If you fall down and you don't have to carry a sword or a stick, it doesn't matter so much. You know quite well. But to roll or to go down on your back with including a sword in your hand um, has the danger that you hit yourself with a stick or with a wooden kind of sword. And therefore, it's necessary or interesting to learn or to practice how to do proper ukemi. Yeah. Should check in between if it's still running after six minutes or so. Last, last time it was 640. Does it look like run? We have to check in. center, make sure that the first impulse of the turning is the center, so the hips itself. It's not the upper body what starts, it's the hips what starts, and the arms swing out to the left side. Then you take it around your body as well. And let's just do open up the chest. Try not to bend your elbows. Sometimes maybe it's too hard, but if you can, you can stretch your arms fully. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was young when I could do that. Uh, of course, the neck. All right, so before we do some suburi, so the basic uh, cuts of hitting, um, we're going to do the rolling. I just checked. Oh, yeah, it's still, it's still going on. And there is beautiful 16 people trying to, to join the class. I'm really happy. Thanks for joining. Okay, so as we do usually in Aikido, we start from the sitting position. So usually this is your back rolling, right? One of your legs is close to your center. And then there's the other side as well. Okay, now I didn't explain anything with the sword, but when we do it from the standing, that's where we go to. 
we have to think about how to handle the sword so it doesn't fly around much. For instance, if I have to take down my, red, uh, my, my uh, right foot to the ground or my right knee, I leave the boken in the right hand because I need the left hand maybe to stop falling. And I knee down and try to carry the boken on the same line and level and just take it down. Left side. We go. There's often situation that if we are taking ukemi, we have to keep contact while we are having the sword in front of us after having a shogunotsu done. And so when we are then going down, we should not move the um, boken as much as possible. So it should not go somewhere because we never see who is behind us in train or maybe it gets out of control and we hit our own head. So, what we try is now, right foot down, and you keep it to the right hand, and you control the walk. I hope you can do that at all. But it doesn't leave much space. All right. So, if for instance, if you have the space to, or you want to try, if you want to do a forward mile kimi, it is also that you have to control you saw it. If you think like you have a cut and there is cutter where the partner comes from behind and gives you a push, so you're gonna go falling on the left side, then you should take the sword out of the direction and then keep it as let's say uh, as less as possible, making some range. So if I keep it forward and I roll to this direction, it will make almost a, a cut forward if I if I come to feet again. Look at that. Okay, so to control that, we have to take it backwards and bring it upright so it almost does a move. That's the idea. So if we do my Okimi, for instance, like after cutting and we're right forward, Take the tip of the saw to the back, roll as normal, and keep it mm, vertical. Other side, yeah. left and forward, take the saw back, roll, and keep it vertical again. Yeah. Cut to the back, and keep it vertical. Cut to the back. So, that would be the way to handle the sword while well, my opinion. Right, okay, maybe we use that later. I'm not sure yet because we're not allowed to come too close. Or we can even use it by uh, distance. So, now, Suburi. I'm sure, pretty sure you know one of the basic forms, first form is always from in music. I'm not sure how it is if we count. And your answer, well, we do that. Okay, so Shominuzi. <coughs> I'm not sure if I should talk about basic techniques or basic stance, but that's the way how I do. So the feet are quite close, it's not more than shoulder wide between the waiting points of the front foot. The back, um, the leg is quite stretched out, but not completely stiff, it is just long but it is also stabilizing the whole body, while the forward leg is lightly bent, so that my knee comes over my forefoot. It's not too much bent, so the projection of the knee uh, would be before the feet, it's like that, but it's not in this uh, dress, so that my 
my phone is too far from later if we are in uh, Qatar or in the Kumi Tatsi. It is dangerous to put the foot in front because it could be uh, reached by the opponent. That's why it's more like supporting in that way. So from that stance, actually, we can shift our hips a little bit to backwards and go forward again. This is the basic impulse for the cut, for the swimming. So from there on, we build up a motion in the body, what is like a chain. So from stretching or extending the forward leg and releasing these extensions, we start to shift our center. And from the center, our shoulders are being uh, brought backwards and forwards. Not too much, but it is a slightly wave what's coming through the body. And that wave is extending through the arms into the sore. So basically, we don't want to stiffen up the arms, but to deliver this kind of wave that comes through my body into the sore by very soft arms. So if you lift, it is while you're going backwards, and if you cut, it's while you're going forwards. So the impulse to cut comes from the feet. It's not from the shoulders or from the hands. It comes through the whole body. That's, for me, it's very important to do that. I don't know if you agree, there's for sure schools or kata will show something different, but I want to use the whole body motion. That's why I prefer to do like that. Okay. So I count and we go together. It's hey. me. Hey. Son. Hey. Si. Hey. Wo. Hey. Wo. Hey. Titsi. Hey. Otsi. Hey. Ki. Hey. Si. Hey. Okay. As you see, there's a certain moment where I really stop down to zero motion when we finish the cut. But my target is not to cut down to that point. My target is to cut to the head and let the sword drop down there. So most of the acceleration of the sword is ended by this point. And from there it comes down to the position of, um, what do you say? I would say like Hanmi or Migi uh, Hanmi and Shuta uh, Nokamai or the, what was the other one? Sigan, but Sigan is close with So let's say from the Shomimutsi to the head, there's acceleration and then come down to the position where the salt points to the opponent center. Okay, again, one, this one. Accelerate and from there it goes slow. We go again, don't put too much force to your shoulders, just swing the, the arms by using your body. It's a knee. A son. A Si. E. Wo. E. Wo. E. Si. Si. E. O. Si. E. Ki. E. Si. E. Okay. If you are doing the shift of the body weight, then you may feel that while lifting the sword, you have more weight on the back foot, while cutting, you have more weight on the front foot. So this is actually leading into a kind of a step work, what we also use in the kendo. So, being free in the, uh, in one of the feet with each direction of the sword. So, you don't need to do it too much, but that comes by using the whole body. If you put down the feet like completely fixed and then cut, of course you can also shift your body, but it is more like a Stiffer or not stiff, it is a um, too much stable position. It is better to bring them closer and use the footwork like that because then you're free to go wherever you want in the kata later. One more time. It's a me, a so, a si, a wo, a wo, a tit, a ot, a hu, a tu. Okay, Hello. maybe you can relax a little bit. So usually we 
do that like 40 times or 50, 60 times or 100 times. And then take the next one. It's a Kili Kaish. So it's almost the same kind to uh, cut, but first you bring your shoulder behind, the basalt behind the uh, back over your shoulder. So basically, the hands are going in the same line, like with the Shomenuti. Same line for the hands, but the tip of your sword rolls behind your back and comes over the head before you cut. So that's the position. Later, if you're not, let's say, fully concentrated or doing it slowly, it can happen that you only use to bring the sword over the shoulder or even lower. But now, of course, we do it the full way, the full swing. Okay, one more time. We go, we start on the right side and then we alternate left and right. Okay. It's me, son, si, wo, wo, tits, hots, si, me, son, si, wo, wo, tits, hots, is also there from Japan. Hey, Tomoyo-san, how are you doing? I hope you're fine. How's your father, Atlesan? Okay. Alessandro, Alessio is also there. Cool. Lots of people, thank you. I'm not sure if you're just watching and we're only working. You should work as well. <laughs> okay. So next super what we usually do is uh, Hisagiri, so Hidari Hami. We start from the left side. Now, it's time to make a wider stance because we want to shift the hips more widely. But also the same principle. The forward knee comes over the forward uh, part of the feet and the back leg is slightly stretched. If you pull back your hips by pushing with this leg and pulling from the other side, you will start to do a rotation, to create a rotation in your body. This rotation comes to the shoulder axis, so the arms are um, affected in that way that we rotate around our spine. And that's the origin for the, for the energy for that. So we bring up the arms by pushing back the, the hips from the forward leg over the shoulder, and then we're re releasing the hips to go forward by pushing from the back or stretching the back leg. And again, the arms come after the hips and the body has turned. Not too far, of course. We don't turn too far, otherwise we lose our perfection. We have to find a point towards us where we get stabilized. So, and then we bring this kind of motion to the body. Okay, there's again this kind of chain reaction from using the stance and the center, delivering over the spines to the shoulder and the arms. And they swing in the line where the sword cuts. Okay, we're gonna do that together again. It's e ni e so e si e wo e wo e sit e Okay, with me straight away. Right side, knee behind me. So now, same again. We push back the hips with the forward leg and 
bring it back by extending the back side. It's using the stance what is a, a basic stance in the kendo so the right foot is slightly shifted forward half foot, foot length the knee is bent and it looks like you're turning inside basically the outside edge of your feet are parallel not the inside edge so the thing is when we bend our knees and when we would continue bending our knees at some point they would touch it feels like going into a wedge position. And actually that's what we need because we need to push forward and hit the center of the partner by using that stance. And we are moving <coughs> because the arms itself don't have enough energy to move uh, strongly. We're moving the whole body by putting the whole stance to the front. Once we took this position, we don't get out. So it's not coming to the up there and going down and up while we're moving. No, we go down and we keep the same level so there's no alteration from the center while we're doing this stance or this um, steps. Okay, now as you already can see, my arms extend as an impulse for each motion. If it goes forward or backward, it doesn't matter. So arm extend, arm extend. It means basically it is like putting the center behind the um, sword so it creates um, some torque. If you would please hold my sword. Okay, if you would hold my sword. If I would, let's say, not use my center and my arms together, I cannot move. But if I put my center and my arms together, I can move the partner by stepping. Okay, that's the talk what we want to create. Think about you need to push your car because the battery ran out of energy or whatever. You cannot just use your hands or your steps separate. You have to put everything together to make it move. And that's basically the same origin. So we also create again a chain from the feet and from the leg action to the sword. So we just go forward and back. It's a knee. That's a forward it's a chin and backwards. It's knee. It's a 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 knee. Okay. Now we go back up again. So the whole time we have this stance. Now usually we do some funny stuff now because I can, uh, for instance, count twice knee or three times itchy to have the same direction what we already had with itchy. We go forward with knee, we go backwards. I'm curious to see if you can do that. You have to watch behind and in front of you how much space you have. I don't know. But then you have to be aware about the command I do. And it's sometimes funny because we're expecting to go forward, but we're going backwards or vice versa. So we start again. Me. Eh. See what I mean? <laughs> it's. Eh. It's. Eh. It's. Eh. Me. Eh. It's. Eh. Me. Eh. Me. Eh. It's. Eh. It's. Eh. Me. Eh. It's. Eh. Me. Eh. It's. Eh. Me. Eh. Okay, that's enough for now. But as you see, you know, we are always expecting, yeah, now I know it should come this or that, but maybe it's so. That's the basic routines we usually practice before we do partner practices. 
But because in that, these times we need some more and you need some more stuff in your, to do in your backyard or in your living room, um, I want to continue a few things what you can practice at home quite easily. So one thing is using the step work of Sihogimi, what we also use in Sihonagi and Akilo, as you know, um, with a with cutting shominozi. So it's a it's a funny thing because it goes to all the four directions. And how to use or how to place the feet is ex exactly the uh, footwork or the technique using the steps what we use in Sihonagi, right? So we're going to start like that. Usually to help my people, my students, is that I say use a cross of the tatami under your center, but you can also start wherever you are. So the thing is, we do two kinds of, um, let's say, step works. The one thing is turning on the plates. And why that? We are, why that? We are putting the sword behind the um, back. So it's a combination of using the body and the idea of kiritaishi to keep the sword in line so it doesn't move around um, sideways, it's just going up and down all the way. So now this was the first movement. So I would say it's a henka movement. Now we cut shomenus. Next is stepping. So my forward foot steps outside and is replaced by my Backward, back, back, like that. So now uh, the right foot points to the, to the new direction. Well, if you if you turn around or I turn around for you, that's more simple than you just call me. Call it from the from the beginning. So first thing is henka. We are turning on the plate. Henka. Now it's like in uh, Shionaga Omotowaza. So we take. Forward look outside, replace it with the back one. And by that, we take the sword over the left shoulder, like in the kitty uh, pipes. And we cut. Okay. Now, the same procedure again. Hang up, we turn on the space 180 degree, and we cut. And now we replace our feet like before to go 90 degrees to the side. So, forward, yes, replace it with the back one, and cut. Okay. Now, again. Henka movement and the stepping from the fold. Henka movement and the stepping from the fold. Now everybody should be right foot forward the same direction like at the beginning, so we did one turn around. Okay, we do again? So, it's knee. Yes. <laughs> Sun. Turning. C. Stepping. Go. Turning. Go. Step. Sit. Sit. Stepping. Out. Okay. With eight. Yeah. Eight times you come around once. <laughs> okay. One more time. It's. E. Mi. E. Son. E. Si. E. Wo. E. Wo. E. Sit. E. Hot. E. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now other way around. Oh, okay. So we could just step work to the left and turn over the right side. Okay, first would be then step and cut to the left, left from the spot and always. Turn around completely and cut. Now again, stepping. This turn around. Yes. Step in, come to the window side, turn around. One more time, step in. Left foot is forward then. Left. Yeah, you step, the, the right foot goes aside, left foot comes forward, while that you're doing here the with the device. <laughs> and last turn, and cut. So, now we've been eight, eight times and we're having the same position like in the beginning, right? Yeah, it is because you're standing left foot forward when you cut, and that's always feeling strange because we never change our hand position. Which is the first? The first goes to the left now by stepping. Okay. It's a turn knee. A sun. A C 
Et. Wo? Et. Wo? Et. Sitz. Et. Hatsi. Et. Okay. One more time. Yes. Step. It's. Et. Me. Et. Son. Et. Si. Et. Wo? Et. Wo? Et. Sitz. Left. Et. Hatsi. Et. Okay, now right side again. We start with the term, anchor. It's et, me, et, son, et, et, wo, et, wo, et, sit, et, hot, et. Okay? Yeah. And now that side. It's et, me, et, son, et, si, et, wo, et, wo. Et tsi Et hats. Et. Okay. And you can do that at home. I <laughs> need a bit of maybe five square minutes you need. All right. This is funny. <laughs> so many people are watching how crazy stuff. Okay. Usually in uh, Kenjutsu, we are using only the, the book. In our practice, of, of course, sometimes you have this wrapped uh, shinai, the fukuryu shinai, in the kashima shinryu, or we uh, work with gloves, what we also have in, uh, in Kendo. So we never do. We are also trying to set up the kata as functional um, techniques, what we can use in kind of, let's say, free fencing. But this is not possible now, maybe later. We uh, start doing that, the kata, or the mechanics of the kata. Now, what I want to do is a little bit of batu jutsu. So, usually, batu jutsu is the way how to draw, draw out your sword from the saya. Of course, usually you have a saya. Well, if you have a saya, you must know you have to draw the sword fully before you can, um, let's say, bring it to the front. That's always a little bit problematic because without a cider, we used to, um, how do you say, betray ourselves quite easily if we only use the bottle. So usually, this is the position of the, um, of the, uh, the yaito. So you have the cider, you can move the cider sometimes, but further than that, it could not go back. So, and, the beginning of the saya or the entrance, the opening, is always there. You cannot just take away your hand and swing your sword forward. And that happens quite often if we only practice uh, drawing of the sword with the, with the bucket without the side. So usually you have to do the full way to extend and the full way back to be correct. And that's very, very tricky with the bucket if you don't. Um, if you're not aware. So I used to teach not to use the belt to put the bokken in there because it would be too far back. But to, let's say, um, use the hand as if it would be the saya, the opening of the saya in front of your left hip bone. So basically it shows that my hand is working like if we use the yaito where we are surrounding the opening of the saya, the entrance of the saya, with the pointing the index finger and the thumb. And for instance, our soul is going around this, this uh, place. So it's not allowed to do something like that, because that wouldn't work with a real saw. So you have to practice full draw before you can point the tip to the front. Or you have to do the full draw to feel there the tip is leaving the, the fingertips and then you can bring it to the front. So let's do so. First of all, you just feel the saw. You always take the bottom, the basic of your uh, plate on the, the back between your thumb and your pointing finger and you slide until you feel the tip in your finger. 
and then you can put it back uh, or inside, I would say inside, in the image mix. Other side around. If I feel the tip of my hook can, I can bring it to the front. Here I can take it. Okay. Now this is not to watch. It's a practice what you can you need to feel. So it becomes more and more natural that you feel with the index finger and the thumb where's the sword. Okay. And then what we do from there is we do we take two basic um, routines. One thing is we lower the center and we're bringing the right foot to the front. There's also opportunities to go backwards with the left or to change or whatever. There's a lot of stuff. But basically that happens first. If you look at my saw, now if I hold it like that, it's quite uh, diagonal in the room. But if I step, it comes to the direction where I'm watching. Also my shoulders and my, my views um, change. So before, I'm a little bit upright, and now if I shift my right foot forward, my hips lowered, so they are flexible to move because the knees are bent a little bit, they are not stretched like here, they are bent, so the hips free to move in every direction, and my shoulders become perfectly hummy, so half open to the front. In the same moment, when I'm doing that, I'm trying to find position with my right but this is not strong, it's not to grab film on the on the walk um, in, it is just position. I need to lower my wrist as long as my blade is in this vertical position. If I would turn the blade with my left hand, of course my wrist doesn't need to go so, uh, so low. But if it is like that, it needs to, because if we withdraw, if we draw the sword and we grab. We need to come to this kind of position in the hand and not from the side. And that is decided by the position of the wrist in the beginning. So if I just grab from here and pull and I pull out, then my hand is in a completely wrong position. But if I am lowering my center, so also my elbow and my wrist, then it comes to the position what we should have when we and if you are thinking about techniques, like what we can enjoy, what I want to do, you have to take my this without without so just like that. If you think about greetings to Martin, how he is starting the shoulder, see the shoulder, how he is moving his body. So it's my imagination. Greetings to Martin. If you listen to that, um, it's exactly the same. So it's an expression of the same body work. We go low to bring out the sword. Either in that way, that's what I want to do, vertical, or horizontal. When I go horizontal, of course, I turn the blade before, so my wrist doesn't need to go too far. But the full extent to the front and then the hip turns and the hand closes, that's why the sword comes to the front. So don't do the action from your arm, because that is not what we're practicing. Do it from your stance and from your center. See what I'm doing? Maybe here. I go lower my center, put the right foot forward. That's why the sword comes to the right direction. And then I draw out. And you see, it's more work of body, especially center and legs, than arms. So it's not this, this. rotating around the center axis, in that case. And also vertical. Oh, 
All right, you go for it. that I was doing that. I know if it still works. Okay, so maybe if you want, there are so many other ways to draw the soul. So sometimes it's a different motion of the body. So you do the same action like before, but you give the body a different direction. Or what you also can do is change the position of your hands. So instead of putting your hand in that position like you usually do, you also can change to the other side around and change the soul position then afterwards. So there's many things, of course, you also can go already in direction of throttling, bringing the sword to the place where the next cut will come. However, you can try around a little bit. It's fun to do that, especially if you're on your own and you imagine somebody in front of you and you will start a fighting over. Okay, so we are almost done with our hour. We do one last practice for everybody, if you have, if you have the chance to, let's go for Not too many, but a few. It's a basic practice to build up the um, strength or power energy in your legs. So you stay in this position, Sigan position, the feet are close or heels are touching, and the sword is to your front. And then, we do Shomenuchi and we stop the pocket by kneeing down and holding with our legs. And from there again. Okay. So we can gonna do that uh, let's say 20 times. <laughs> it's a knee. A so a see a hot a see that sooner or later and uh, thanks for watching and maybe joining I hope you have ideas so we're gonna start the zoom meeting if you want to come in you're very welcome I love want to see your faces and hear your voices as well so we finish now and then see you in a minute Okay. 